Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. In this video, we're going to talk about the advantages or benefits brought about by firmware 3.10.20 on the LG CX or C10. Now, there has been some delay doing this video because I think the firmware came out maybe a month or so ago. But the reason why I had to wait so long for doing this video is because I wanted to get two 48-inch C10 or CX OLED for this side-by-side -side comparison. So on your left here, this LG C10 is loaded with the old firmware. And on your right, this is loaded with the new firmware. And on the one with the old firmware, I kept having to reject the offer to upgrade the firmware. So just say no and play hard to get. Keep them keen. That's how I roll. But the reason why it has been a delay is because I had to wait for the 48 inch version for the same screen size and stuff. And 48 inch LG C10 are like gold dust because I think in certain markets you can't even buy them and in other markets they are trickling in and maybe they are only available at certain stores as an exclusive. The reason is because the 48 inch OLEDs are cut from the same mother glass as the 77 inch OLEDs. So as you can imagine, the resources are quite scarce at the moment due to the pandemic. And the reason why 48 inch and 77 inch OLEDs are cut together from the same mother glass is because of yield. So this will produce the highest yield. If they cut the 48 inch OLEDs together with let's say the 55 inch or 65 inch OLEDs, then they'll be wasting a larger portion of the mother glass. So 48 inch OLEDs have to be cut with 77 inch OLEDs and that's why stock is extremely hard to get. And I've been thinking about, you know, buying in lots of 48 inch OLEDs if I can get stock and then calibrating them and then, you know, shipping them out, you know, as calibrated sets. This is a crazy idea I had. But let's get back to firmware 3.10.20 on your right here. On your left is 3.0.70. So the first advantage that most people will already know of would be the addition of AMD FreeSync Premium on 3.10.20. And you can see that it is present in the user menu, but one probably lesser known disadvantage of engaging AMD FreeSync is that you actually lose Dolby Vision support. The reason is because some characters in the edit needs to be taken up by AMD FreeSync to signal to any compatible devices that this display is capable of AMD FreeSync. And the most obvious function that can be discarded to accommodate this AMD FreeSync would be Dolby Vision. So if you enable AMD FreeSync, you will lose Dolby Vision. And if you want to use Dolby Vision, you will lose AMD FreeSync. In all honesty, I think AMD FreeSync Premium the importance has been overblown by many parties. So let's say the C9, it doesn't get AMD FreeSync Premium. But I don't think it's that big a deal because let's say if you are playing on consoles, let's say the Xbox One X now, and maybe the PS5 and also the Xbox Series X later this year, they will all support the base VRR function, which is HDMI VRR or HDMI variable refresh rate. So you don't even need FreeSync from that point of view. And I think AMD FreeSync is only useful if you are using a PC and you have a AMD graphics card. But I think you know the majority of the gaming market is dominated by NVIDIA currently. So NVIDIA G-Sync is probably more useful at this moment in time as I speak, you know, famous last words, with you know Ampere and Big Navi soon to come out before the end of this year. But yes, I would probably recommend most people just leave AMD FreeSync Premium disabled unless you are using an AMD card from a PC to use in conjunction with the television because you will lose Dolby Vision support. So that's upgrade number one that has been brought about by firmware 3.10.20. 
And the second upgrade would be a lesser known one. We have to delve into the service menu. And if we compare side by side between the service menu on firmware 3.0.70 versus firmware 3.10.20, you can see that under the OLED submenu, there is this new function called GSR Enable. So basically, this is global sticking reduction. And what it does is that this function will detect any static elements on screen and then dim down the image to try and prevent any burn in. But I think, you know, a few professionals in the creative community, let's say colorists, let's say, you know, videographers, they have been using these OLEDs to try and grade their content. And they found that when there's UI elements present on screen, the picture will dim, albeit very slowly, but it's still dimmed. So LG has now provided a way to disable this global sticking reduction so that you know the presence of UI won't actually dim the screen, which will be a very useful feature for any of you colorists out there or you know budding colorists like myself out there. But the thing is, you venture into the service menu at your own risk. I have to say this, you know, you press one wrong button, you can break your TV. So don't take it lightly. But, you know, I'm just telling you that the function is there. If you are someone who needs to disable the GSR function. So that's that. And continuing on the theme of grading, of color grading, firmware 3.10.20 also rectified the malfunctioning HDMI signaling override function on the previous firmware. So you can see here, I'm feeding a footage from my DaVinci Resolve as a video feed to both TVs. But because my laptop, my editing laptop, can't send out the HDMI metadata, I had to depend on this HDMI signal override function on these OLEDs to force an HDR BT 2020 picture to try and treat it as such. But you can see that on the whole firmware, it is not applying the correct transfer function at all. So the image is extremely washed out with elevated blacks, whereas on the new firmware of 3.10.20, it is applying the correct ST2084 transfer function and rendering the image as HDR10, which will help me immensely in grading the footage. So that is another fix that has been implemented. Probably not many people will know it because you know you don't really use these functions to grade your footage. But I'm just telling you that these are the main benefits that has been brought about by firmware 3.10.20. Obviously, there are other bugs or say shortcomings that LG still need to work on and they haven't changed with the new firmware. So let's say if you have elevated blacks in Dolby Vision, if you had elevated near blacks in HDR10 content, you know, there will be panel to panel variation. So sometimes it may improve it, sometimes it may not. But when I applied the firmware here, it didn't really make any change and also the raised near black gamma in VRR mode, you know, that all remains unchanged. Then I can reassure you that LG is on the case, you know, they are aware of these issues and hopefully they will be able to fix these issues or at least minimize these issues in the next major firmware. So I think, you know, that concludes my video for now. Now, here's the thing, you know, I think these type of videos take a long time for me to produce. And I had to source two TVs, I had to compare side by side and then film the footage, put them together, and then present in a video to yourself. And when I see some other channels, they manage to come up with content that doesn't even need a TV, you know, you can just base it on news report. It just makes me wonder whether I'm doing the right thing here, trying to be so technical and trying to do all these comparisons when I could be just doing a similar amount of clickbaiting as, you know, all these other channels. So that's something on my mind at the moment. But if you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.